Do you read Sutter Kane? Welcome to Reanimator Reviews. I'm Rayanne, and today I'm going to talk about In the Mouth of Madness, a John Carpenter masterpiece starring Sam O'Neill as John Trent, who works for a company that kind of investigates uh, fraud claims or possible fraud claims, uh, reveals a lot of con men that might be setting fire to their warehouses or just lying about things to uh, gain money. So he is commissioned by his company to investigate the disappearance of a very prolific horror author, Sutter Kane, whom they liken a lot to Stephen King as he's also a very prolific horror author. And he gets sucked into a strange, strange universe. The movie doesn't open with him working a case necessarily. The movie opened with uh, Trent in a mental institution locked in his padded cell where he's just, you know, trying to talk to, I assume it's his caseworker who is recording everything and uh, he, he doesn't feel like he's there um, for a good reason. He feels like people aren't taking him seriously. He does inflict some harm on a man's testicles while trying to get him into said cell. And then the majority of the movie is kind of like a flashback to how he got there. So he is sent with uh, the editor for Sutter Kane to try to find a place where he's, you know, been hiding out or disappeared to. And Trent sort of figures out where this mythical place is by um, his own research, which I'm surprised they went along with, but he unearths some truths that perhaps he can't handle perhaps the rest of the world, the universe that uh, John Carpenter has created can't handle, and I will leave it off here. So the movie obviously draws very deeply from H.P. Lovecraft in his designs and imagery of the Elder Gods, the Old Ones, um, people transforming. It has a lot of undertones of Clive Barker with the art itself and the storytelling, I felt. And uh, they do mention Stephen King. I didn't really get a lot of Stephen King vibes other than, you know, they, they dropped his name and his style of writing and I'm much more a fan of Clive Barker, I will say. And I definitely got a lot of Clive Barker vibes from the illustrations in the most. So what did I like about this movie? I, I love this movie so much. I love that it's, it's trying to convince one way or the other if things are actually happening or if they're actually happening, but what you think of reality maybe isn't the truth, which was an interesting concept. I thought that was a really, really cool direction that the story went in. I like that just Trent's character is so logical and he doesn't want to just, you know, you see a haunted painting and it's moving and he's like, oh no, it's, that's, that's just how it is. And when they, they get to um, the town and she's telling him that certain things are going to happen seconds before they actually happen, he still remains such a skeptic. And I thought that was, you know, that's a unique way to write a character because typically they'll be like, oh, yeah, you're right. But no, no, he was not falling for anything. And he was just very stubborn in his belief of what he thought reality was. I really liked all the creature design. I thought it was beautiful. I love anything with disgusting, oily looking tentacles and half man, half whatever creature. It's just, it's so refreshing to have that, not just like a stereotypical zombie or something easy they could go to. They went and definitely, you know, pushed their limits a little bit. I, um, I like how much this movie just messes with you and really makes you wonder what, what's actually happening and what, what part of this is a dream? What part of this is what the characters are living? 
that keeps it interesting and keeps you engaged. So very happy about that. I thought that Sam Neill's performance, as with anything he's in, was great. Um, I thought the performances of a lot of the other characters were good as well. Um, the the kids in it, not so much. They were just the, the stereotypical creepy kids. It's fine. Um, the, the gore, the effects, great, perfect, wonderful. What did I dislike about this movie? It is, I think, I want to say this is 90s or late 80s perhaps, and it definitely has that level of CGI in it, which takes you out a little bit, makes it look a little bit dated, but for the times, I'm sure it was mind-blowing. Um, I, what what really didn't I like about this? I, I, this is a solid movie. I really enjoy this movie. This is not the first time I've watched it. I have a copy of it. I watched it this time streaming on Amazon Prime, I do believe. And it obviously it's available other forms, other platforms. And uh, I just, I really like this movie. I like how much this movie messes with you and makes you think of different dimensions and the, the old ones and everything. So I would probably rate this four out of five. I really, really do love this movie. I could watch this movie over and over and over again. Um, it, there's just so many aspects of it that are great. But have you seen this movie? What are your thoughts? I'd love to know them if you want to leave me a comment down below. Uh, like the video if you did like the video, or you could like the video if you like this mismatch thing. I did a review of a bunch of products I got in BoxyCharm, so in order to use all of them, I ended up kind of pulling a weird, weird Harley Quinn kind of look, but I'm not mad at it. Uh, choices were made. Hit the bell for all notifications of further uploads and live streams. You can also find me on Facebook at Reanimator Reviews, Twitter and Instagram at Reanimator. My solo as well as reviews with the groom are available in podcast form. Thank you to the Farsighted Network. It's on iTunes. Please don't forget to check out all of their awesome creators and content as well. And I hope that you are all doing well and you have a good day. See you later, guys. Oh, what's that? Is that a sphinx cat on your shirt with some corpse paint? It sure is. I'm also wearing Star Wars pajamas. So there's that too.